Thank you for joining us for another edition of Special Broadcast. I'm Anthony Martinez. Today, we are joined by legendary artist, nine-time Grammy Award winner, John Legend. It is now my pleasure to welcome nine-time Grammy winner, John Legend. Welcome to AU. It's great to be here. How are you? I'm doing fine. You started playing the piano at four, so music was something you were born with. Uh, it's a passion that you've always had. How does it feel to be able to be successful in that passion? Oh, it's, it's amazing. It's a wonderful life to uh, be able to do what you love to do all the time, to uh, be able to make people happy, be able to write music and put it out in the world and have people receive it so uh, enthusiastically to be able to perform in front of people around the world. It, it's a beautiful thing. I love what I do. And there's another passion you have, which is um, helping people. Sure. And fighting for social change. Mm -hmm. um, education is something that's close to your heart. Mm -hmm. Where did this passion for education come from? Well, I just know that I benefited from a great education. Uh, I benefited from people along the way who cared about me and wanted me to succeed and saw potential in me and help develop it. Uh, however, what happens uh, too often is too many young people don't have that opportunity. Uh, too many young people are left behind. Uh, even in America, the greatest country on earth, the most powerful country on earth, the richest country on earth, uh, there's far too many kids who don't have the opportunity to get a good education. And too often it's determined by uh, the amount of money their parents have, the color of their skin, what neighborhood they grow up in. And uh, I see that as an injustice and I believe that uh, injustice is something that people who know about it and people who have the power to change it uh, should speak out about. You graduated high school at 16. Yeah. Graduated University of Pennsylvania at 20. Mm -hmm. What do you attribute your fortune to? Well, I think it's a number of things. Um, first of all, I think it started with my parents. Uh, um, they, neither of them went to college, but uh, both of them uh, believed that education was really important and they were trying to make sure that I was reading before I went to school. Uh, they homeschooled me for a few years, um, uh, periodically throughout elementary school and middle school years. Uh, and so they laid a great foundation saying that education was a high priority for us. Uh, and they taught us that we could do anything in life. So when you start with that foundation, then uh, you just have to have people along the way that are able to take that and run with it and help develop it. And I had great teachers along the way that uh, were able to do that. Uh, counselors, teachers who believed in me and wanted me to go further, even higher than what I expected for myself at the time, even though I wanted to do great things. Uh, for instance, I didn't envision myself necessarily going to an Ivy League school when I was in 8th, ninth, 10th, 11th grade. But I had people at school that had those expectations for me and helped me aim for that level. And, um, you know, when we set high expectations for kids, uh, we are finding that they'll rise to those expectations, but when we set low ones, they'll rise to those as well. And so uh, if we want our kids to do well, uh, there are a number of things we have to do right, including having great teachers, including um, you know, making sure there's enough class time. But one of those things is setting high expectations for them, and uh, you'll find more often than not that if uh, we set those high expectations, we put people in front of them that believe that they can reach them, then uh, they can achieve. And you believe Teacher of America does this, puts teachers that are motivated, that hold high expectations for their students? Yes. Well, I think Teach for America is one organization that does that very well. Uh, they uh, are kind of indoctrinated with a mission. Uh, when they go through training, uh, they are indoctrinated that uh, they're on a mission to go out there and uh, close the achievement gap, go out there and give kids opportunities that they otherwise might not have. And um, they've been proven to be successful. Uh, at doing that, not only in creating a difference for the kids that are in the classroom at that moment, but also in uh, sending those teachers uh, off with a mission and then creating people that have the zeal and the passion to uh, fight for education reform throughout the system. People who are running school districts, people who are running uh, charter school networks, people who are really changing the world when it comes to education reform. A lot of them came from that system, from that TFA system, understanding that once they saw that teachers had the power to really change lives. Once they saw that if the system is run correctly, 
uh, we can do so much better for our kids. Uh, once they saw those things, they decided that we couldn't uh, sit idly by and let the system just uh, rot and let the system remain at the status quo um, and not do right by our kids. You started a non-for-profit recently, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. Show Me Campaign, launched in 2007. Yeah. And the organization um, goal is to fight poverty. Yeah. How is Show Me Now campaign going about that? The Show Me campaign, uh, the first project we took on was we adopted a village in uh, Tanzania with the uh, Millennium Villages program. Uh, it's run by Jeffrey Sachs and the Earth Institute at uh, Columbia University in, co in connection with the United Nations. And they have villages throughout Africa and other places in the world who uh, began living on less than a dollar a day, uh, began in extreme poverty, and um, Jeffrey Sachs believed that we had the power to help those folks help themselves get out of poverty, help themselves um, uh, thrive and survive in their community by teaching them agricultural methods, giving them health care, giving their kids education, um, various things, uh, drinking water in their communities, all these things that we kind of take for granted in a lot of places. These folks didn't have those basics uh, so they could help themselves. And so we began to uh, raise money to help this village and uh, other organizations, other countries uh, throughout the world are doing the same in various villages throughout Africa. So that was the first project we took on. And then uh, as, as I got involved in uh, a charter school in Harlem called Harlem, Villages, Harlem Village Academies, uh, one of the things that I saw was that even in America, where we have so much, there are still a lot of folks living in poverty. And uh, we've seen that the biggest impediment to uh, getting out of poverty is the fact that so many kids don't get a good education here. And uh, it's concentrated in uh, poor and minority communities. And the only way for us to break that cycle is to make sure that those kids um, uh, get a more equal playing field when it comes to getting a good education. And right now, it's not the case. And so we decided that if we were going to fight poverty abroad, we also wanted to fight it at home. And our mission here would be focused on education reform. And I speak about that a lot and uh, I, you know, uh, do as much as I can to help with that effort. So you, with 25 million Americans in poverty, mm -hmm. you believe the key... I think it's up to 40 million now. 40 million. Yeah. Um, you believe the key is education? I believe uh, education is probably the most important factor in breaking the cycle of poverty. We have to do some other things. I think criminal justice reform and, and other things matter as well. But I think education lies at the heart of so many of our issues. And uh, if we believe in the, the mission of the civil rights movement, if we believe that all people in America deserve an equal chance at success, uh, we, we can't sit back, sit back yeah. and, and let our education system fails so many young people. Gotcha. We're going to take a commercial break. We'll okay. be right back. Much more with John Legend after this. Welcome back to ATV Special Broadcast. We're joined by nine-time Grammy winner John Legend. Um, you've quoted, you're quoted as saying, quote, I feel I want my career to be defined by the fact that I'm not going to stay in the same place, that I'm going to try new things and experiment. Where do you see your career going? Well, I'm going to continue to push myself as an artist. Uh, I'm always trying to improve. As a songwriter, I'm always trying to make my next album the best album ever. And um, that's the way I look at it. Uh, this next album is pretty soulful. Uh, it will be kind of reminiscent of my first couple albums. Uh, and I felt like that was a sound I wanted to get back to a bit. And um, you know, who knows what the next album will be like, though. Uh, I've collaborated with a lot of interesting people in my career. And uh, I'll continue to do that. And I'll continue to explore. Music is such a uh, a diverse uh, a field of possibilities. Music um, has so many different opportunities for us to collaborate and work with so many different people and, and do so many interesting things uh, that I never want to limit myself. I just want to make great music and, and continue to push myself to be better. Do we have a name for the new album? Or We don't have a name yet. but uh, You've you know. released one song you've played, um, Dreams. Yeah, I've been uh, singing that on, on the road and maybe I'll sing that tonight. Hopefully. But, uh, who knows what else will be on the album. We're still uh, writing and uh, I think it'll come together in the next couple months and then we'll put it out uh, early next year. What's the favorite song? What's your favorite song that you've ever written? Uh, I don't know. I think Did Ordinary you? People is high up on the list. I, I think that's a lot of people's favorite of mine and I still love singing it. Uh, I still love the connection that it has with so many people in my audience. You came out in the 2008 presidential election and supported um, Barack Obama. Yep. Many in Hollywood 
find it risky throwing politics into a career. Yeah. What made you come out and support Barack Obama? Well, I just always um, seen politics as something that citizens of this country ought to get involved in. Uh, I've always felt like, you know, as a democracy, we all have a say in uh, the future of the country, and uh, we have uh, the opportunity, and I think the responsibility to speak out and, and advocate for things we believe in. And uh, I know that it may be sometimes risky for an artist to do that, but I feel like it's worth the risk for me because I know that um, when you uh, fight for what's right, when you fight for what you believe in uh, politically and fight for the opportunity to help some, so many people who need the help, uh, it's worth uh, putting your uh, reputation on the line to do that. Has President Obama met your expectations so f thus far? I think he's done well. Uh, I, think, uh, I think a lot of people, I think I understood America's political system going in. I think a lot of people expected him to just be able to make yeah. everything he wanted to make happen. But I also understand there's a, a co-equal branch of government called the legislature um, that has a lot, of slay, a lot of say in what happens in this country. And um, you know, to the degree that he's uh, had a, a, a Congress that was willing to work with him, he's passed some legislation that I think is very important, like health care reform, uh, education reform, and the race to the top, even the stimulus, which I think gets a, a bad reputation because it wasn't enough to uh, uh, completely bring us back to full employment. Uh, it, it certainly saved us from the precipice of uh, the depression. And uh, I think he doesn't get enough credit for some of those things. And then when you realize that he can't get anything passed in this Congress right now, even things that have highly Republican uh, influenced yeah. uh, provisions in them, uh, then you realize that uh, it's not enough to have a president uh, who, who, who's trying to do the right thing. You have to have uh, a legislative branch that is as well. You talk, you articulate very well the issues, and you have are concerned about the issues that face America. Mm -hmm. Political office in the future? No, no. Uh, I don't want to run for uh, political office, but I do want to uh, speak out on things that I care about and influence the political uh, process. Donate to candidates that I believe in and, and think should do, are doing the right thing, uh, and speak out about issues that I believe uh, the the country needs to be thinking about. What? We're going to switch it off and go lighter now. Um, what has been one of your most embarrassing moments um, performing? I don't know. I, I, I have fun on stage, <laughs> and, and uh, I'm not really embarrassed by anything I've done on stage. Um, I love what I do, and I, I've been having a good time. That's and, uh, and I can't really think of any moments that I regret. All right. We're going to do a lightning round. Boxers or briefs? Boxer briefs. Smart. East Coast or West Coast? Um, I prefer the East Coast by just a yes. little bit. I, 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 I have residences in, in both places, but uh, I lean toward New York a little bit more. Night out on the town or a home-cooked meal? A uh, home-cooked meal. My girlfriend's a good cook. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Bar or club? Um, yeah, I'm more of a bar lounge person, only occasional club. I'm old now. <laughs> right. And. Uh, I, you've already answered it, but single or in a relationship? In a relationship, yes. Oh, some sign I hear. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for joining us. Hope you enjoy your time at thank American. You. Thank Pleasure. you very much. That's the show. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.